Howdy ho, this is Terry. I've lost 180 pounds with keto, carnivore, and counting calories. Now I'm in low carb maintenance mode. Thank you. Hey, we're about to turn these 10 85% ground beefs into uh, meals for us for the next week. And I'll show you what I usually do. Okay, so I set these out last night, but they are not defrosted all the way. These are, like I said, the 85% ground beefs. And listen, when you go to Walmart, you make sure you look for your, you look for those yellow stickers on your meat. So first I go ahead and put my liner in my, in my crock pot, because it makes cleanup way faster. And then I'll put all, I put five pounds in each crock pot. So this was 10 pounds that I got. And uh, it's not all from this week. Um, I. Just every time I go to Walmart, I save a 15, 20 extra dollars to go towards uh, meat. So I'm going to put all these in here and I'll be right back. Okay, so the meat is all in here. There it says five pounds and five pounds. I put both crock pots on low. And the amount of water I add depends on how lean the meat is. If I do 75%, I really sometimes don't even have to add water. Um... But I, I do, you know, the, the drier it is, you know, the leaner it is, the drier it is, and the more it needs some more liquid in there. I do not season my meat. Um, you can season yours or you don't have to season it. I don't, so then that way, whatever way I use this, um, I can, you know, it'll be, it'll be ready. I, it will not have a particular seasoning on it. You could put salt and pepper on it if you want. I actually use the leftover rendered fat for dogs. I give it to my dogs as fat bombs. Um, I know uh, you can also make, you can use that rendered fat for yourself and use that to cook in. So either way is fine. This method works for any ground meat. You, I use this for ground chicken. I use this for ground pork. I use it for sausage. I use it for beef. Um, you can use it with anything. And when I do this, um, this is how I make my riced chicken. So first I crock pot it and then I um, then I put it in the skillet to kind of dry it out a little bit. Uh, I will come in every hour. I will set a timer and every hour I will come in with a chopper and I will chop my meat. But that's how I get my carnivore style lunch and supper ground beef going. So every hour I come in and I use this and kind of chop up my ground beef and uh, just kind of chop it up. I can't get all the way through it yet. There's still some frozen in there. It usually takes about four hours, somewhere between three and a half to four hours, depending on how much and how frozen it was. So that's this one. This is the other one. So now I set my crock pot timer every hour. I come in and chop it up. Again, I do not season it because I want to use it for all different things. If you want to season yours, go right ahead. But <clears throat> if you add a little extra water, you can have some wonderful broth. I do that sometimes too. Right now I've got a lot of broth in my freezer, so I don't do it. But um, yeah, every hour. I come in and do that. Okay, it has been two hours now. And again, I come in and chop it up. The reason I chop it up is so it doesn't become one big uh, meatloaf. It might be good like that, but I just don't like it that way. So, <clears throat> and the leaner it is, the stiffer it is, just so you know, because there's not as much fat in there that's helping it work. Um, what I will also say is um, I use these bags because the leaner it is, the more it sticks, too. So um, the bags keep it from adhering to the crock pot. And when you have two, three, four crock pots going at a time, you're looking at, you're trying to find the least amount of cleanup possible. So I am all about using my plastic liners. Mm 
you just kind of kind of have to we pull it away from the edges and just chop it up so I'm gonna do this to the other one here this is the easiest meal prep ever you can just come in and do this every hour in the meantime you can be playing with your kids you can be I don't know crocheting you could be whatever it is your hobby is but then at the same time you know you're gonna have some good healthy food for you later if you're carnivore you can do this and then add whatever seasonings and cheese you want um, if you're keto you can add some sauces to it and some vegetables to it you can turn this into cracked cabbage you can there's just so many things you can do with ground beef once it's ground i have made burgers um, whenever i was straight carnivore I made burgers and um, and they work too, but um, I just got tired of that texture. And so this was just more fun. I could put in like a wedge of laughing cow cheese and or some feta cheese and, and seasonings and um, yeah. So there we go, it's been two hours. So it's gonna be another, at least another one and a half hours. You can just tell, see how that's right there is kind of gummy. It's not cooked yet, so there we go, and I will be back. So my beef timer just went off, and I feel like it's done. I don't see a bunch of pink in there, so sometimes it takes longer than other times. So I don't even know how long it's been, but looking at it, you know, there's no pink in that. So that's this one. And this is the other one. And I don't see pink in this one either. So we are going to go ahead and get this uh, <clears throat> portioned up. And when I do that, I'll have a, I'll get, let's have a conversation about how I used my ground beef when I was carnivore. So it's all done. I drained out the liquid and it's in here. <clears throat> I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and let it separate and from there, like I said, I use the fat, if there's very much fat, I'll use the fat to make fat bombs for the dogs, and I can pour the, pour the liquid off, the broth out, and have that for a broth later if I wanted to. I'll just kind of see what I do with it, but I just keep this, and I put this in the refrigerator till they separate, and the fat gets really super solid. Okay, so here's where the magic happens. I weigh my meat out. Um, even when I was carnivore, I was eating about two pounds of meat a day, so I still weighed it out so that way I knew what my portions were because I was obsessed. I was very dogmatic, and I knew that, you know, the people I was following, like Kelly Hogan and, and all of them, they were saying that they ate approximately um, two pounds of meat a day, so I was bound to determine that I was gonna eat two pounds of meat a day I did not take into account that they were already at their goal weight. So what I should have done was <clears throat> whenever I stalled, instead of continuing to eat that two pounds of meat a day, <clears throat> I should have gone to, um, what I should have done was gone to pound and a half a day. But they were so big on to making sure that you eat when you're hungry and stop with your full and I am not a moderator, so that does not work well for me. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so for me, I've always had to weigh my stuff. And um, so that's that's what I did, and it's what I do now. Right now, this 85%, I'm going to go, I'm doing um, right at 8 ounces. And um, so <clears throat> that I do every, I do them about all the same. So then that way they are the same. And every day, you know, if you're counting calories, what you can do is you'll pull it out and you'll know exactly how much they are and exactly what you're eating and exactly what you can plug into your tracker app if you are keto and counting calories. <clears throat> Carnivore, you can still do this too. Um, you know, you just don't have anything you necessarily have to track. But like I said, had I 
thought about it, the fact that I was gain, I was stalling for seven months, had I really thought about it and switched and, and lowered the amount of meat that I was eating or cut back a little, the fat by just a little bit, I feel like that would have made a huge difference. But again, the, the, the groups that I was in, that was frowned upon. So, and I was in the Facebook groups with Kelly Hogan and, and uh, Charles Washington. And so it was very frowned upon for people to count and track and measure and, and cut their fat. So at that stage, I only knew to, you know, what they said. Oh, I eat about two pounds of meat a day. Well, I don't have the ability to, to feel hunger or know when I'm hunger because um, two minutes. Two hours after I'm eating, my stomach is, is making noises, and um, my brain interprets that as hunger. So I that is why you will see that I eat by the clock, and I am very strict with how much I eat. Now I'm going to say this: I was more strict when I was count, you know, when I was counting calories, and whenever I was um, in weight loss mode. Now I'm not as strict. I am. But what I'm strict about is the amount of meat that I eat and the fact that I still eat pretty doggone clean. Is it perfectly clean? No. But I still eat pretty, it's really pretty much the same things I ate <clears throat> except for I did add fruit back. Um, but that is how right now in maintenance, I'm, I'm in maintenance. <clears throat> you see I weigh everything and measure, or I weigh my meat and measure my meat because I want to make sure that there is consistency. You know, if there's something that goes on, like say my scale starts creeping up, like I told you all it was doing, well, because of that creep up, I went from 73% or yeah, 73% to 80-20 and this is 85% because it was on sale. So um, because I am so OCD about measuring things and I know exactly what I'm eating, I... Um, I know, okay, well let's lighten up on the <coughs> let's lighten up on the meat calorie and see what happens. So that is how I do my thing. That's how I've been in you know, I've been maintenance for a year now. And uh, that's kind of how I'm working through maintenance is still weighing everything and measuring everything. If you're carnivore and you're not at this there you know, doing the same thing I'm doing, well that's all right. You, can, you don't have to count and measure things. You can just scoop up and do like some of the people do, eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full. I just don't have that ability. So that's why I have to meal prep. And, uh, or, and if you're able to do that, you can still pack these with a pound of meat. And then whatever you eat out, well, then that's that, you know? So that's just, this is just how I manage to do mine. Now let me get this last little bit. Hang on. This last one is 6.6 .6 ounces. And so I'm going to label it because that way when the day, whenever I eat it, I'll know to add something else to it or whatever I want to add to it. So 6.6 .6 ounces. The rest of these are eight ounces. I'm not going to label them because it doesn't matter. So this is how much I got out of 10 pounds of 85% ground beef. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So there's 14 and two-thirds of a meal. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, 14 meals right here. And um, so that's a whole week's worth of food because I'll eat one for lunch and one for supper. So there you go. That's how I do my carnivore um, ground beef in the crock pot meal prep. For the record, I each of the one pound packages of 85% were $4.50. So all of this was $45. So that's going to make each individual uh, meal about $3.20 a piece. And that's not counting this extra little one. So at $3.20, you can't go out and buy eight ounces of a burger for that price. Um, eight ounces, that's like, you know, half a pound and you can't go out and buy a half a pound burger for less for $3.20. So you could even pat these out into burgers if you want, 
but right here this is three dollars and twenty cents and so that's that's a lot of money you're saving by making it at home and not standing over a hot stove so there you go that is my three dollar and twenty cents a meal carnivore keto ground beef so this is the rendered fat and liquid that's left over and I am going to try to separate it in just a second here. Oh, I need a place to put it. Hello, Terry. Got a plan ahead. Um, hang on, I'll be right back. I gotta grab something. Okay, so now I've got the, you can see that gelatinous broth. I'm just going to scrape that off. And then you've got some really nice uh, beef fat right there. And I'll put it in this container. And you get another one. And you can just clean them all off. And then at the end, with you can do what you want to do with your beef fat. Again, Nona Grace and Lori, FN, FNM Lifestyle, both of them use the, um, they both use the fat to, um, they, they use that to cook food in, like to fry their eggs in, to, you know, they want to cook a burger or whatever, they use this fat in that way. So, or you want to take a, okay, take it and you want to flavor up some, Something that you're cooking. That'd be something good to do with it. <clears throat> you can add this to any meal, any food, whatever you want to do with it, you do with it. I turn around to give mine to my dogs as a treat. And I know some of you have said that your vet tells you not to. And that's okay. You do what your vet says. I had a vet tell me one time that uh, feeding my dog a raw, a raw food diet was going to kill her when in all actuality it cured all of her allergy problems that the vet was having me pay all kinds of money for. So I definitely love vets and they definitely are amazing, but they don't always, um, just like medical doctors, um, vets are trained, um, and just like medical doctors, they are trained about medications that solve a problem. So when your dog has a problem, it's awesome to take them to the vet. Now this right here, this gelatin, that beef gelatin could be used for so many things, but I'm going to show you what I'm about to do with it. Not all of it. I'm just going to give, I'm just going to take a couple pieces. Lou, hey, don't eat me. Ow. Sammy. Sam. Uh-uh, Lou, no. This is for Sammy. Okay. Callie. And now Baby Shark. I may only have a few fingers left. Sit, catch. There we go. That's just easier. So, I just gave them all a little bit of that. And, um... Uh, and I will just freeze this and I can use it later in a soup or something else. So there's that. And then these I'm gonna pop in the I'm gonna pop in the freezer and I will turn these into fat bombs later on. So that's what I do with the leftover fat and the leftover broth. So there you go. You can do what you want with yours, but that's how I separate mine.